Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. Today will be part three of a three-part series on accurate handgun shooting. Part one was stance, part two was sight alignment, sight picture, sight adjustment, and part three will be trigger control. Now this comes with a few disclaimers. First being that nothing I say today should be inferred as a tutorial of what you should do. It's only an explanation of what I do and why. Secondly, trigger control is probably the most difficult aspect of handgun shooting and there is no magic bullet, pardon the pun, of how to fix it or how to do it correctly. It takes a lot of work and a lot of concentration. And third, I've been asked this a few times recently. This is an earplug case. I keep my earplugs in here and yes, I wear earplugs with every shot I take. So all that having been said, let's start with I'll show you a close-up of trigger control. This is a Smith & Wesson M&P 22 and it's a good handgun for demonstrating trigger control. Trigger control always starts with a good grip. First, as always, straight trigger finger. When you get a grip on the pistol, you want to choke up on it as much as you can, but not so much that it becomes unnatural or uncomfortable, and get a grip with all your fingers and your thumb all the way around the pistol. You'll see people stick their thumb out. No, you're not hitchhiking. Some people even have their pinky stuck out. No, it's not a teacup. Just a good grip. When your sights are on target and you put your finger on the trigger, you don't want to have it in the joint, not just the very tip, just in about the middle of the pad. And whether you're shooting slow fire where it takes five seconds to pull the trigger or very rapid fire where it takes half a second to pull the trigger, it's still a steady squeeze straight back and it should surprise you when it goes off. Did that surprise you? It should. As I've said before, when teaching a novice how to shoot a pistol, you have to start with a user-friendly pistol. The Smith & Wesson M&P 22 is a good choice because it has a pretty decent grip, nice high visibility sights, and because it's got that long, consistent trigger pull, the same as what you'll see on the M&P 9mm or 40 or on your Glocks, it can really be a good vehicle to teach slow, steady, straight back squeeze of a trigger. Now let's see how I can do with this on this target at 10 yards. So not too bad. Now let me show you something else that can really help people acquire good trigger control skills. One of the biggest problems people have in trigger control is anticipating the recoil. Knowing that the gun is going to kick back just a little bit when they fire it, they anticipate that and force it forward as they pull the trigger. And that's difficult to get people to understand or see what they're doing wrong and can be very difficult to correct. A good tool to work with that is a single action revolver like this Ruger Bearcat. When I put this on half cock, it'll freewheel the cylinder. And I open the loading gate, and I load one round at a time in a gun like this. Now it's a six shot revolver, but I'm going to load it with only five rounds. So at some point when I pull the trigger on this, it won't go off. The trick is for the shooter to not know when that one empty chamber is coming up. So I'll rotate the cylinder a couple of times, lower the hammer, now, I have no idea where that empty chamber is. And when I pull the trigger on that empty chamber, the barrel might move a little bit as the hammer falls, but we shouldn't see a real dip in the barrel. So let's see how I do on this 10-yard target. See that? Didn't move at all, or at least very little. Now let's take a look at the target. And there you go, not too bad. And when I do drills like this with new shooters and they anticipate the recoil so badly that they almost fall forward, then they gain an understanding of what they're doing wrong, and you can start working on correcting it. One of the criticisms of the slow, steady squeeze to the rear that surprises you when it goes off is that it works fine for slow fire, but not for rapid fire with multiple target engagements. 
Well, let's go back 10 yards and we'll shoot these three targets with this Beretta 92FS and see if we can put that notion to the test. Okay, not bad for 10 yards. So what's the bottom line to the whole thing? There is no magic bullet, pardon the pun, to master trigger control. It just takes a lot of work and a lot of concentration and a lot of rounds. So as always, don't try this at home. I'm what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the trigger control video.